Okay, we are going to begin talking about chapter one of Triola's Essentials of Statistics. And we are going to be um, using my notes for the third edition, and I'm going to be altering them slightly as we go along to accommodate the fourth edition. So the first thing that we want to do is just kind of talk about what this chapter entails and not get into anything too deeply, but just kind of bring up some of the ideas. So the first thing that we want to talk about is what is statistics. And you see here, I've underlined this in um, three letters, meaning capital letter, right? Statistics. And statistics is really the study or a method of analyzing and interpreting data. And data is just collected information. So as you can see over here, um, statistics is really a method that involves, first of all, designing an experiment. And an experiment can be truly an experiment or it can be an observational study. And we'll talk about that in section four. And then gathering that data. And gathering that data is part of um, the thing that you design when you design an experiment or an observational study. Um, organizing the data then, so once you've gotten the data, how do you get it all together so you can see what you're looking at? Summarizing the data, and summarizing the data um, it does sometimes just involve crunching numbers. And then the next thing that we want to do um, is analyze and interpret the data. So we can summarize the number by cr data by crunching numbers sometimes, and then sometimes it's also visual as well. But those don't mean anything until you analyze that and you explain to people by interpreting the number crunching you've done or the visuals that you've given in terms of what this tells you about um, the information you, you found and what you wanted to find. And then finally you draw conclusions and um, and make a determination based upon the analysis of the data and then you present those uh, the data and the findings and you talk about sources of error and things that could have happened and how it could have been better and things like that. Now not everything that we do in statistics involves this entire process. Some of it's just going to be getting the information and summarizing it. Statistics that you think of when you, when you hear the word statistics like baseball statistics, those are just summaries of data. They don't involve this whole methodology. They're just little pieces of it, but that doesn't make them any less important. Now, the data that we collect is just the information that we can collect. Now, some of the information that we might um, collect would be, for instance, if you took a survey, they always ask you about your gender, right? So we could have gender information. And then, um, also on a survey, you might be asked to rate your experience um, at a certain amusement park or something on a scale of one to five, where one is um, you had a really crappy time to five being the best time you've ever had at an amusement park. Another type of data that you might find would be temperatures um, measured at certain intervals during a chemical reaction. Now that could be information that came from an actual experiment. It's still observational, but the experiment could have caused temperature changes by creating that chemical reaction. Another um, type of data that you might come across would be incomes of lawyers in California. Maybe someone's doing um, a study about um, lawyers' incomes for a law school so that someone can have an idea of, okay, well, if I want to become a lawyer, where am I going to live in California? So we have all kinds of different types of data. We're going to go into the types of data in section 1.3 and talk about um, the different categorizations and how we can relate that. Now, the next thing that we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about um, how are we going to get this information? Why do we want to get the information? Well, when we collect data, we want to do it in such a way that we're going to get information about the population. And a population is a predefined thing. That's part of define, uh, designing an experiment or an observational study. You think about, okay, why am I collecting this data and who or what is the population that I am collecting the data from. And once you have defined that, then you can talk about getting the information. What we want to do is we want to we gather the information from a sample 
that is as representative of the population as possible. Now we're going to talk about this idea of random sampling again in the last section of the chapter um, and we'll go into a little bit more detail but collecting data randomly is going to be very important to us because we want to make sure everybody has an equally likely chance or every item in the population has an equally likely chance of being um, chosen and that even though if there may be subpopulations within the population or um, different you know subgroups of some sort that we may, that we're representing them proportionally to what is in the actual population and that leads us to our next topic which is a pop, what a population is versus what a sample is so first of all a population is everything that conforms to a predefined set of characteristics so when we sit down to design an experiment or design an exper uh, observational study or decide we want to collect information we say who or what are we going to be collecting this information about? And that defines our population. And if we were able to get all the information, then what we would have would be a census. You guys know what a census is, right? You've heard of the population um, being tabulated in the United States every 10 years, and that's called a census. Well, the reason it's called a census is because we're supposed to be getting the information on all the population of the United States. Well, sounds great, they've actually talked about changing the name of the census because it's actually impossible to get the information from everybody in the United States. Think about it. What about the guy that lives under the bridge? How likely is it that they're going to get his information when they go to collect the census data? If he's moved that day or he's off um, somewhere else, he, they're not going to get his information. What about someone who lives way, way back in um, the mountains? They don't have a phone. They don't have um, mail service. They maybe only come to the major town once a year to get some supplies. How are they going to get the information from them? Um, there's all kinds of circumstances like that. So populations are usually kind of in theory. It's very rare that we can actually account for every single member of a population. And as a result, what we get instead is what we call a sample. And that's usually where we get our information to make inferences or to summarize what we think's actually in a population to give us that um, feeling for what's going on about whatever question we happen to be asking. So a sample of the popula is, uh, is a part of a population. And we get that sample so in such a way that we get it as close to being representative of the population as we possibly can. And this requires us to learn about some sampling techniques and to know the difference between um, different types of samples. And some of our biggest types that we're going to learn about are a simple random sample and a simply just a random sample. Now a random sample is actually possible to achieve. Um, a simple random sample it's possible, but not as likely that, that we can get one of those, although that is kind of our goal in life, is to get a simple random, random sample. Again, we'll talk about that in the last, last section of um, the chapter. Now, what we can, we're going to do is we get our information. What we want to create is a summary of that information. And one of the things that we want to do, it's not everything. Sometimes we actually will get the information, we'll summarize it, and then we'll also do what we call hypothesis testing and we'll interpret the data using other statistical methods. But some of the first things, and one of the most familiar things to do with um, statisti in statistics is to give you a summary, like the mean or the median of a set of numbers. So when we do this for all of the population, so we have every single individual that conforms to the defined population, what we're creating is a parameter. That tells us what's really going on with everyone. However, it's very unlikely that you will get a population and therefore actually have a parameter. So instead, what we gather is a sample and we um, summarize the sample information and what we get from samples 
are statistics. There's an alliteration that goes on there. Sample statistics, population parameters. And the sample statistics, what we do with those is we infer about the population. So that pretty much summarizes what we're going to be talking about in this chapter. And remember, the whole reason for us talking about statistics and taking a statistics class is so that we can be better consumers. My goal when a student finishes my statistics class, my um, introductory statistics class, is that when they hear statistics on the news or read them in the newspaper or see them on an advertisement, that they are going to be a better consumer. They're going to look at that statistic and they're going to say, hmm, I believe this, or no, I don't believe this, or should I believe this? How is this information collected? What are they trying to tell me? Are they trying to lie to me through the information they're giving me by only giving me part of the picture? Or maybe um, this is great information and they I see that they've collected my information correctly, the information correctly, and given me all the tools that I need to interpret it for myself. So that is what I want from my students when they leave my classes. And this chapter is kind of just an introduction to some techniques that we'll be using in order to progress on through the study of statistics. And also, uh, some of these new sections in this chapter, the section 1.2, it's just a little bit more on logic and critical thinking and thinking about um, information that you do see and judging whether it's good or bad or likely or unlikely. Um, just having some thoughts about information coming at you rather than just accepting it blindly and um, not, really, not really thinking for yourself, just giving, being given what other people give you. So that concludes this um, introduction and overview.